views. Tell them no can contest me, don't sh- What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. I appreciate everybody for coming. We got a lot of shows to talk about tonight. Uh, I'm going to talk about Power, Book 4, Episode 9. I'm also going to talk about Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers, Episode 6. And also, the show that's on Epics that it's been a sad thing that I haven't been able to talk about it more. It's one of my favorite shows that's been on that I have been watching. And I have talked about it and watched it with people in Discord. It's called From. It's on Epics. They had the season finale and it was really good. It ended on the cliffhanger. I'm not going to talk about it too much because I want most of you all to go see it. I'm pretty sure most of you all haven't seen the show, so I'm not going to spoil the show. But I do want you to go and watch that show from it's on Epics. It is scary to some people that don't like, you know, monsters in a way. Or, you know, I know some people like my girl Kelly. She don't like the little crunchy parts of people getting ate up or whatever, but it's a good show. And I think that if you give it a chance, you'll like it because it's not as if it's something happening every moment. It's not even every episode. So I think it's a good, good show to check out. Um, First, I'm going to start off with winning time because I'm pretty sure uh, most people, I don't know how many people have watched Winning Time, um, like they should, but man, this is a good show, and the more I see it, man, Dr. Buss is amazing, Dr. Buss, the things he had to go through and overcome in order to keep the Lakers in just the first year alone, and to get the Lakers to where they are today, Man, that's amazing. <sighs> I'll take a little sip of happiness right quick. Anyway, that winning time is dope. We on episode six of winning time. And I mean, it is just excellent, excellent TV show. Um, This episode had a lot of things that I didn't know happened. It always seems to be something in winning time that is new information. Um, Kendall, I agree. Dr. Buss was a true visionary. Uh, Winning time is an excellent show. Excellent. It's on HBO You can catch it on HBO Max if you aren't, uh, you know, subscribed to HBO. But Winning Time is definitely good and is a very, very good show. I love everything about it. The the camera work, the cinematography, the, the, the wardrobe, costume, everything is excellent. What's up, Nisha? Happy Soulful Sunday. I know that's right. You like that ripple? Hey, what are you doing? Give me that ripple. This is the big one, Elizabeth. Everybody's been talking about Top Boy, especially in Discord. Um, I have it on my next to watch list. Now that power's about to be off, I'll be able to binge watch Top Boy and and uh come with some some uh you know videos about Top Boy. Um so that is my next thing to watch, Top Boy on Netflix. If you're wondering what I'm gonna be talking about next, that is it. Top Boy. Um So winning time, it's not about the basketball per se of it, of the show, because they rarely show them playing basketball. 
It's about everything else that went on to get the team basically on the court. And uh, one thing that, uh, <laughs> shy girl, did I miss you doing any voices? You do that, homie. <laughs> I'd say that's a ripple. Atlanta also. Karen, that's a good one. I am going to do Atlanta as well. So I will be talking about Atlanta and Top Boy. When uh, when Savannah Rivers was saying a ripple, I was doing my Fred G. Sanford impression. What do you want, you big dummy? Go on and give me that ripple. Where's my ripple? Anyway, <laughs> um, so, you know, one of the things that happened in this uh, last episode of uh, Winning Time that was really cool to watch was that they showed Magic Johnson going to talk to Converse and Puma and all the big sneaker Adidas. They were all the number one sneaker companies at the time. And offering him all this stuff, like $80,000 a year, or which was a lot of money back then for a shoe contract. It's nothing today. I mean, that's pennies, uh, you know. But anyway, Phil Knight, he came. And Phil Knight, of course, is the the founder of Nike. That was Phil Knight. He was waiting in the lobby. He didn't even get a chance to get the big meetings. And he told Magic that he could sign him, and he got his own personalized shoe. He brought out the first little uh, Air Ones, <laughs> and there was the 77 version, uh, you know, Nike uh, high tops. And uh, he brought those out, and it had Magic on the back. And he was like, yeah, we're going to put your name on it. Ain't nobody else ever had their name on the shoe and he offered Magic a hundred thousand dollars in stock, hundred thousand shares in stock, and then he told him he'd give him a dollar per shoe that was sold. Which you know they could have sold a million pairs of those shoes. That would have been a million dollars. You know they sell a million pairs of Jordans. Anyway, Magic ended up not going with the deal. They later showed that had he had went with that deal with the 100,000 shares at the time at that deal, each share of Nike was 19 cents a share, 19 cents. And in today's prices, Nike stock is, is, is $134 a share. In 79, it was 18 cents, not 19 cents, but 18 cents a share in 79. And now it's $134 a share, which would have made his stock worth $5.2 billion. Off of that alone, he could have had $5.2 billion. So... He definitely regret that. <laughs> um, so, you know, it definitely was tripped out. Um, yeah, it is a lot of racism going on. They, I mean, everything. I mean, you would think things was different, but it was 1979 still. And, you know, although things had changed, a lot of those people didn't change as much. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, Damian Kenny, you say Magic didn't have the, the foresight of Jordan. Truth be told, Jordan didn't have the foresight either. This is agent David Falk who made Jordan take the meeting with Nike. He wasn't even going to take the meeting with Nike. But Nike didn't offer Jordan the same offer they offered Magic where they was going to give him 100,000 shares of stock. Um, but they did give him a great offer and more money than anybody else. Um, but, you know, if they'd have gave him 100,000 shares, that would have been, uh, woo. 
but they probably figured he might not want to take that deal since Magic didn't take it. Um, so who knows? But, you know, live and we learn. Um, we saw also um, that the coach had severe head trauma. I mean, it looked like he was about to die in the hospital. Um, but he eventually kind of came around and uh, at the end of the episode. And we later saw he'd been in that damn hospital in a coma for like two weeks, three weeks. Um, we see that Dr. Buzz's mom is starting to have some dementia. She didn't file the paperwork in time. She didn't remember what day it was when it was open at night. It was all kind of things going on. And it's kind of sad to see that, you know, when your mom or loved ones are no longer able to do what they did um, and they start to deteriorate. And that's just kind of sad um, to see. Um, she she really is kind of tripping. And Dr. Buss, he's trying to be in denial a little bit. Um, we see also how the Lakers Stadium became the Great Western Forum. Because Great Western was a bank they had a loan with. He wasn't able to repay the loan. And he tried to call the bluff on, hey, if you try to sue us, we don't have any money because the team is not in our name. But his mom didn't file the paperwork. And so the team was technically still in his name. But they eventually going to get it all figured out. He had them partying in the forum club. And we saw that, hey, eventually it is going to work out, although they didn't get to that part yet, just yet. And then also, we had Mike Epps in this episode as Richard Pryor. For those that know the history of Mike Epps, he's been wanting to play Richard Pryor for years, being the Richard Pryor biopic. Mike Epps does kind of look a lot like Richard Pryor. <laughs> And Mike Epps was partying in the Forum Club. We got white bitches and white cocaine and everything. You need to come on through. And uh, Magic Man, I don't mess with that narcotic. And Spencer Haywood, he had Iman. He was married to Iman at the time. Spencer Haywood was a hell of a player. And he did eventually get on drugs in the NBA at one point in time. That is very true. And we're starting to see how he got exposed to that, being on the Lakers, being in the Forum Club, and a little depressed about his playing time and his different role and hanging out with the wrong people, celebrities and things, and started smoking crack and all that stuff. Uh, if you uh, look up Spencer Haywood and some of his interviews, he even talks about how he was on drugs, smoking crack. Everybody told him free base was the clean version. You don't get the sniffles and it ain't none of the bad stuff. And he, when his production was going down, he blamed it on magic, not throwing the passes right and other things. And we get to see, and it's also, this is played by Wood Harris. And we get to see, all of these things happening in the very beginning in this show. And also, his brother Steve Harris is in this as Magic's girlfriend's father. And he was all about the money. He like, hey, I let my daughter down uh, nicely for you. Um, but I wonder if Steve Harris and Wood Harris, because they did such a great job in BMF, got the role again working with each other because they never worked with each other before until BMF and now they working with each other again in this show and although they didn't have any scenes together um it is good to see them on the same projects Karen you say Pat Riley looked much better in real life why does Pat Riley act and look so crazy? That's uh, Adrian Brody. 
Adrian Brody is a amazing actor, but with his nose and his look, he don't look like Pat Riley at all. But Adrian Brody is an excellent A-list actor, though. But he don't look nothing like Pat Riley. That is true. <laughs> so, you know, definitely. Uh, Wood Harris is an underrated actor. I agree with you 100%, Kendall. Uh, Dawood said Wood Harris, our number one black actor. I don't know about that, but he is a very good black actor. I don't even like to say black actor. I just would say he's a very good actor and very underrated. Kendall, when I think of Richard Pryor, I think of the movie Jojo Dance and Your Life is Calling. That's a very good movie. It's a movie Richard Pryor made about his life. And yeah, it definitely was a very good movie. Yeah, Adrian Shy Girl said Adrian won an Oscar. Yeah, Adrian Brody is an excellent uh, actor, but he doesn't look like Pat Riley, so that is true. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Wood Harris doesn't play Richard Pryor. Mike Epps plays Richard Pryor. So Mike Epps plays Richard Pryor in this episode. Wood Harris is playing one of the Lakers, Haywood, Spencer Haywood. And we have uh, Steve Harris playing the father of one of Magic's girlfriends. So that's the roles. But yeah, Mike Epps plays, uh, you know, Richard Pryor. All right, let me go ahead and give this a uh, Mosco. So let's see what it is. All right, the most go. Four simple categories, a top score of 25 points, give you a total score of a 100. And, of course, if you want to do it between a 1 to 10, I can always take off a decimal point, and there you have it. Nevertheless, let's get into it. The visuals and cinematography for this episode, I give a 25 excellent excellent camera work i love how they talk to the camera i love the visuals it looks like it's in the 70s it looks like a documentary everything is top notch storyline and plot excellent everything about this uh storyline is intriguing excellent acting even though it's a lot of newcomers they do an excellent job everything is top notch Special effects, makeup, costumes, damn near perfect. Um, it's not a lot of special effects, although the coach really did look messed up and his face was suffering from that swoliosis. And I'm going to give it a 20 just because it's not a lot of special effects. Entertainment, fun factor. I mean, I really like this show as a sports fan, but just as the storyline um learning about the shoes the the behind the scenes things magic johnson all of the stuff going on i mean it's just really good and i'm gonna give this episode this is one of the best episodes almost of the season which every episode has been very good um for this story but i'm gonna give it uh a 20 which brings it to a total score of a 90 which is very high a total mosco of a 90 um of course i give a 0.5 margin of discretion so if you said an eight and a half or a nine and a half i can see either of that you guys go ahead and put in what you would rate this episode of winning time um and out of 90 i can move the decimal point and that would give it a nine out of ten which is a very high score again and i think this show is excellent very well done top-notch acting 
John C. Riley is doing an amazing job as Dr. Buss. John C. Riley is letting people know that he's the real deal. Excellent actor. Nothing but very high praise for John C. Riley and the work that he's doing on this show. Top notch all the way. I think he deserves Emmy recognition because, I mean, he's doing an amazing job. And the actor that plays Magic Johnson is doing an amazing job as well. I think his name is Quincy Isaiah. Um, excellent job as well. And I think this was a really good show. I like it a lot. Uh, let's see. We got Karen said an 8.5. Jocelyn a 7.5. Jocelyn, where you been? I ain't seen you yet. You been in Discord for a couple weeks. I ain't seen or heard from you. Where you been? You didn't disappear like the Cowboys in the playoffs. What happened to you? Got Kendall 8.5. Your two weeks is up. Nisha 8.5. All right. T baby 8.5. All right. So yeah, very good show. All right. Let's uh go ahead and get into the show from on Epics. So the show from on Epics is a very good show. I know a lot of people haven't seen it, so I won't spend too much time on it. But it is a very good ep uh, series. It's on Epics. Epics is the same uh, network that has uh, the Godfather of Harlem. Okay. And a lot of people may have canceled Epics thinking it was nothing good to watch. Well, From is very good and worth watching. It has Harold Perrineau, who was in shows like The Matrix, The Best Man, and uh, Oz, I believe. Oh, yeah, Oz, right? Yeah. And so uh, this show, um, they are different. These are a bunch of people, and they somehow end up in Central America in a city that no one knows how they got there in the middle of this town and i mean in the middle of america not central america where you know between uh, north america and south america in the middle of america and these people were traveling from all different parts of the country and ended up in this town when they try to leave the town they end up right back in the town as if they went around in a circle. And the the catch is at night, these monsters come. And the monsters come and they want to try to eat the people and devour them. Now, the monsters look like regular people from the 1950s and 60s. But if they get a chance to get you, then they turn into some real scary monster looking creatures and they will devour you but they can't get inside because they have these you know amulets hanging up that they ended up finding that protects them from and it keeps the monsters from coming in the house <laughs> all right thanks gina it was oz <laughs> So, yes, this is a very good show. It's one of the few shows out right now where I can't wait for the next episode to, to come out. Those that begin watching it now are lucky because all 10 episodes have now aired. The finale came out tonight, and the finale was very good. It leaves you on a cliffhanger, and I can't wait for the next season. Um, I wish that it could just come out next week. Um, it's very good. D. Renee, you just finished the final episode. You liked it. 
Uh, it was good. Kendall, I agree. It's not too scary. It's more suspenseful. But I know people like Kelly will think it's scary. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it's scary at all. But nevertheless, it is very good. Very intriguing. It's suspenseful. And I really enjoy the show. Very good acting. Top-notch acting. Um, nobody jumps off the screen as a bad actor to me. Um, and it's kind of an ensemble picture, uh, uh, ensemble show in the sense that it's so many different people in the town and they all have different parts. And it's not just one episode completely about one main character, Harold Perinu ends up being like the sheriff of the town. So he does have a dominant role, but it's a lot of other people that have just as significant of a role in the show and in what's going on. And I think it's very good. And the finale, um, you know, I'll just say he's on a quest and they come across a few bumps in the road. And it's just very difficult for him on that quest. And, uh, you know, the people in the town, they had a plan to try and, uh, let's say, figure out a way out of the place. And that plan ain't exactly turning out how they thought it would. Um, but it it is somehow turning out how they thought it would. So... Um, I'll leave it at that. And it is very good. Definitely worth watching. I really enjoy this show. And as you see, overall, I rated it an 8. I could bump it up to maybe an 8.5. But an 8 is a very solid rating. And out of 7,000 people... On IMDb, it comes up to a 7.8, so damn near an 8 out of 7,000 people, which is very high for an IMDb rating, and I think that's about accurate. Majority of the people, 30% of people, gave it 10 stars. I wouldn't give it 10. Majority of people gave it a 10. Uh, if you add up, the top three, then you're looking at, what, 50, 60, 70% of people or better gave it a eight or higher, which is very good. So with that being said, I think this is a good show. I'm not going to really get into the nuts and bolts because I know majority of people haven't seen it yet, and I want you to check it out. I don't want you to get spoiled with me telling you how it ends. All right. So with that being said, uh, I definitely think you should check it out and I think you'll enjoy it. Um, I might go ahead and watch a couple more episodes in Discord tonight. Um, I watched it last night with Gina and Miss Crafty. We was up. A few other people, I think, were still there watching it with us. And we watched a few episodes, uh, Barika. So, definitely come on through. Late Nights of Discord is always good. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to pick you up a little drizzank. <laughs> All right. D. Renee, you say it reminds you of Wayward Pines. I'm not familiar with Wayward Pines. Um, what is that on, and where can you find that? Because I'm not too familiar with that. Um, Wayward Pines. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Um, it is. Uh, is it on what? Netflix. Shy girl. <clears throat> How can I join the Discord? Is there a fee? Here's the 
the link to join Discord. It is a membership. That way we don't have just anybody join because a lot of people have come to make disturbances. And this is for members. Now I do have membership as low as $1 a month, but you will not have access to be in Discord. So you need to be a Tommy Egan level or higher to be in the Discord. But it's still very affordable, okay? And it's more of something to keep people that are not really true supporters or keep people who want to cause problems out, okay? It's not uh, something that is making me rich, okay? So it definitely is not that. All right, Kendall, you waiting on your cup to arrive? Don't forget to send me the pictures now, Kendall. Um, I'm waiting to see them. All right. All right, so I put the link in. Definitely go ahead and uh, join Discord. If anybody in here that's a Discord member wants to tell Shy Girl a little something about Discord, uh, definitely go ahead. Um, I know when I say things, people might think I'm just trying to say stuff, but it's always good for other people to say and hear it out of their out of their own mouths versus me saying things um, because people may not believe me. Um, so anyway, all right, let's talk about Power Book Four, Episode Nine. Um, I got Brillo in the building. What's up, man? What up, though, Jay? What's up? What's Good. up? Hey. hey, man, that from is fire, man. Oh, yeah. I made the mistake of watching it with my wife, and now I can't binge it because she like, don't watch it without me. <laughs> man, you just got to <laughs> watch it and act surprised when you watch right, it yeah, again. That's what it's going to have to be because I can't watch that. Yeah, it's from fun. is good, man. It makes you really want to see the next episode, don't it? It does. I mean, I ain't got that feeling. I know what that feeling you're talking about where you can't wait to see what happened. Like, I had to make myself stop watching it. Yeah, I know really? that. That ain't, that ain't good. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. But, yeah, From is good. Um, so, what do you think about this last episode of Power, episode nine? Um, where did it stood out to you? And uh, what would you rate this last episode? I enjoyed the episode, even though a lot of the things didn't make sense. The rate that I gave it on most Mosco, I gave it about an eight, probably a seven five to an eight. Um, I enjoyed the episode, but like I said, it had a lot of holes in it, a lot of things that didn't make sense, and it's not hard to even make those things make sense. But you know, what's one what's one though, thing that didn't make sense to you? Uh. It didn't make sense that Tommy said, or JP asked Tommy, um, how long have you known? And he like, I've known for a while. But you just found out yesterday. Why not say yesterday? I found out yesterday, right. a couple hours ago. Well, he uh, knew a little longer than that, but I wouldn't have told him if I did, though. Why right. start an argument? Exactly, especially at that time. Also, uh, the serves, they should have been on Tommy, on Tommy. They should have been hunting Tommy. Uh, that we needed to see a text of like I'm gonna meet with you or something like a phone call to see Murkovich on the phone or something or something before he goes to even even bring the just the walk right in five million up right like, how did you even get to the door like it should have been on site with Tommy because he's killed I still haven't did the serb count uh, but he's <laughs> kind of at least fifteen to twenty right. serbs just in this season alone. Like, how did you get it even in the door? Like, you should have been on site to kill Tommy. Things like that just... Yeah, because the last time we, uh, last time we saw, saw them, they got right. shot at and then left in front of Tommy House. And then right, what, so they gave up? <coughs> they no, said, all it would take was a little scene, a little text or anything. To let them know, know I'm coming. Is it cool? Right. Can right. we talk? Can we sit down? 
Right. Gina said, don't let me get you in trouble watching that show without your wife, man. <laughs> yeah. You go ahead and I'll be like, oh. Get you, so right, you be might like, not be a good right. actor. She might know right. your ass seen it like, hey, you wasn't surprised. You knew. You right. on the couch tonight. <laughs> it's definitely fire. I'm, 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 I'm kind of salty. You didn't. Well, you probably did mention it before. I mentioned it in uh, Discord more. I think I only mentioned it like once on a, on a Sunday, but not a detailed. And uh, but in Discord, I've mentioned it, and we watched the episodes a few times already. So, um, but. You know, it's definitely fire. Yeah, from is definitely a good one. I should have mentioned it sooner. I actually didn't pick up on it myself to like the third or fourth episode, and I was like, "What is this? Oh snap!" I'm, I'm on episode three, and I can't wait to. I'm gonna have to go ahead and cheat. <laughs> hey, it's a good one though. God, you better get your acting skills polished. Oh. Right. Then wow. you already know. Right. <laughs> you see that? Right. Exactly, exactly. All right, so power, I get what you're saying, and that makes sense. They could have made it. A, just small little things helps the yeah, stories tie insane. together. What do you think about this, uh, you know, Flynn blaming Tommy and the kids just buy it automatically off rip? What? I thought that. Claudia was smarter than that. She knows better. Uh, she even told her brother Tommy's not like that. Like, yeah. And Vic Ho, uh, if you can't, if if he can't have her, nobody can. Like, buddy, he was never bumping your head because of that. Like, he stopped smashing your cheek immediately. Right. He he ended the relationship with her. Right. He didn't want her. He was trying to help you. And it's kind of weird that they are like, oh, die. Duh. <laughs> like, duh. You know, I'm with you. Like, I thought, I thought Claudia was 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 way smarter than that. Vic is in shock. Right. You know, his trajectory has went down. Of course, when he caught the body with, with Tommy with the serves, I'm like, okay, this dude's gonna be solid. He's not what I thought he was gonna be. Because initially, I thought, of course, he's gonna be a sucker. Right. Which, I was right, you know, but they right. kind of made us feel like he was going to be a, a solid dude. But I thought she was going to be like a queen pin, but she don't got the temperament. All her daddies had to do was say, hey, come rub shoulders with these gangsters. Right. Like, you swallow everyone and die. I know, right? <laughs> she she definitely let her emotions get out of hand because at first her her, man, her mind was in control and she was saying no nah, that don't sound like Tommy Tommy wouldn't do that and then who are you with him or with us right Jay but why not like I know that's your parent your, your parent and you always respect your parent but why not stand on that like Vic like no I know Tommy didn't have anything to do with it he tried to help me like stand on it if you know it you don't right. have to be disrespectful. You don't have to always agree with your parents. Right. If they wrong, like, they're wrong. Just right. tell them no. Tommy did not have nothing to do with it. But we're going to find out who did. Shut up with that shit. You know, Tommy Egan is the one you don't trust. You always trust your da. Okay? I opened the gate of hell because I am the devil. <laughs> Why would they think... <clears throat> now I know she eventually saw Tommy walking away from the Serbs, but before that, doing? why would Tommy? Yeah, why was she there anyway? But like before that, that, why did they think Tommy would hire the Serbs to get him? That don't make any sense. I didn't understand that. What do you think? He could have put a bullet in Vic's head when he went to see him and left Vic stinking right in that loft, just like he did the Serb in. Uh, in the in the uh, cafe with the other Serbians, like he Tommy, they clearly don't know who they're dealing with. Tommy's mm -hmm. never been throwing rocks and hiding his hands. He catches bodies itself. Talk about he wouldn't get his hands dirty. I know, he didn't right? Do enough research on Tommy, then Walter. Exactly. They they didn't. They don't really know Tommy. Right. He's uh, the complete opposite of that. Right. Damian Kenny says the hit was a Flynn job. Walter to unite his family, Claudia to put the men against each other 
to control Dahlia and the organization after the smoke clears. I don't think that Claudia had something to do with it. Yeah, maybe Walter thing, had something to do with it. I don't know. What you think? I don't know. Like it kind of fits, but do you, I don't think he would have did that with Vic in the car. Like a bullet, like a second. You know what I'm saying? Vic could be dead. He's not gonna have the serves hit up the car with Vic in it. Uh, I just think he's benefited from it. Um, I don't know. Like that was odd. They shouldn't have had the Serbian do the hit. Like. You know what I mean? Because it kind of don't make sense. Right. Unless they're going to show us, show the serve going off and that we need to see, like, I'm going to kill him. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going, him to say something like, you know, you, you went off on your own right before time you killed him. Like, I didn't, I never told you to do that. Murkovich could have said something like that. So we'll know, like, the serve went on his own. Like, we, right. we have to ask all these questions ourselves. And, like, it's getting kind of ridiculous. It's leaving a lot of loose ends. You know, so it doesn't yeah. make sense for Walter to do it if Vic is in the car, and it doesn't make sense for the Serbians to do it because Mercury clearly didn't know who it was. You know right. What I'm he didn't know nothing about it. Right. And uh, Levon, I do think the Serb twin acted alone, but they're not confirming it, is what yeah. we're saying. You yeah, know, they got to do that for us, man. We, we're watching the show, we don't have notes, we're just watching the show. Like, we don't really know what's going on. That's why I said I enjoyed it, but it, it had, like, I got a lot of questions still. Yeah, it does leave a lot of questions uh, up in the air. A lot of things uh, not, you know, tied up nicely. And, uh, you know, when you're putting your time and watching something for 10 hours um, a season, then those little things add up. You know, so I get it. Um, one of the things that, uh, what do you think about D Mac now and how he got shot and all that stuff? What, what do you think about that? Uh, oddly enough, that was probably one of my favorite scenes. I mean, what do you think, think about the Uncle Tommy? Yeah, that was, <laughs> I'm not gonna call you Uncle Tommy, I might call you Tom. Then he gets popped. Uh, for one. Jannara, please, he need to get up off the car. If, if that was him, again, let us see who's shooting. All right. we see is black arm shooting. For all we know, that ain't even CBI. Right. Even though we know it is, but I'm saying, show us right. who's in the car. And get out the car and hit your target. This is the second or third time he misses shots like Lulu. Like Lulu. They, If they really wanted to take him out, all they had to do is wait till he came over there to the barbershop. Right. You know, and took him out in the basement or something. So, you know, that's another thing, you know. But they did this because they, they wanted to, to build the suspense in the episode. Um, and, you know, that's what happened. Who do you think about this person that got shot in the back seat? Was it if Blackston? It's, if it's Blackston, that would be another power blunder. Killing a character, too. Even though he hasn't done nothing and it really wouldn't kill the show. I just think that that, you know what I'm saying? A waste because they could have. Right. I hope that was just an unnamed, random CBI member. Yeah, because, I mean, that would be another waste of a character that they could have did more with. Um, Right. I I think that, uh, you know, he's a good actor. Uh, Barton Fitzpatrick does this this genre real well. And uh, it would be great to see him more and uh it'd be unfortunate if that's how all we get um i hope that isn't the case um yeah, me too yeah and go uncle tommy to the rescue <laughs> good I'm thing glad. he didn't get shot nowhere serious huh right i'm glad that you know i see um i definitely i'm 90 percent sure he's not gonna die so Okay, Levon <coughs> say Blackston in the preview for next week, so it ain't him. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> Kelly said, hashtag Uncle Tom. <laughs> Uncle Tom. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Kelly. Uncle Tom. Me neither. I'm over here thinking of other stuff, man. Uncle Tom. That's a good one. Funny. Um. <laughs> So what do you think about this uh, cop 
man, this crooked cop is now robbing drug dealers. What do you think about this? Is that we had a little, you know, talk about this yesterday? Yeah, is, definitely. Um, I kind of was overthinking it yesterday with a chat. Of course, it's a crime, but I'm looking at it more of like a a, phys, a philosophical question. Thinking, you know, cops they don't really follow the same rules as civilians all the time. Like you know, cops rob people all the time and plant evidence, you know, and the majority of the time they're gonna stick together they're not gonna do anything for us. so of course it's a crime and it's wrong but that that's kind of how i was looking at it like okay when i said that it wasn't a crime of course it's a crime but since 90 percent of the time they're not gonna get know, punished get punished for it i'm thinking you know that's just the angle i was coming at but yeah i think they did his character wrong like jay what we're missing in the show i think what like where's the cop like like remember we had the t we had sacks in the OG power, you know the, the cop presence that wanted to make a case. We, in, in Power Book Two, we had Detective Whitman, who you know wanted to make that case. Like, where is that cop for force? Like nobody's investigating all these Serbian bodies that died. We saw the FBI one time, and then right. we haven't seen them again. Why are they not trying to make a case? And what is where are these Serbian bodies going? Are they? I forgot all about the FBI. They did a horrible job. They raided the damn uh, dialysis center with no real evidence. What they thought they was going to find? Kilos in the damn dialysis packs? I mean, you know I'm like, we need, yeah, like, they're not I doing a good I, job on the investigation side. I can't believe I'm saying this, but we need some cops. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We need that pressure because they are selling drugs. Right. That pressure of getting caught and all the other powers we've had that right hanging over our head. Like, man, is they gonna get locked up? Or damn, they they found that out. They got them on the wire. Anything, you know what I'm saying? They got evidence against our people. <clears throat> and this cop, we haven't seen him doing any good. Only crooked work. Exactly. Like he can he can be a dirty cop. Like that's fine. Right. For the storyline, but. We gotta have him do something else too. Right, like example, even on the wire. I mean, not the wire. Snowfall. We see the crooked cop, but he's still trying to do his job too. He may be crooked, but he's still trying to arrest the bad guys too. You know, and uh, yeah, he may be partying and doing a little sugar on the side, but he still want to arrest some bad guys too. He even was putting pressure on Louie. Saying right. you need to give me some people. You like at the end of the day, he's still a cop. This dude ain't made no damn bus. And why wouldn't you clean the safe out if you're doing a I know. anyway? He gonna leave him some. All right, that that's for you. <laughs> they fumbled with this character. I thought he was gonna be that cop off the first scene. He seemed tough. He was waiting on Diamond in the in the barber shop. Look, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, this cop is gonna be pressing Diamond. I, I thought so have, too. Like, that Denzel, you know, training day type. Right. If right. You're gonna be crooked. Be crooked. Be tough with it. Right. And how he know they had this money in the safe? How he ain't been casing the joint. Yeah, and, that too. And, and Diamond you know, got too much money in here in the safe in the barber shop. You know how many people would have been robbed him for that much money? You know, and giving him fifty k extra, that he'll eventually be back. He got away with it too easy. You think he'll never say, well, no, nah, I'm not going to go back. He'll go back again. It just it just bought him a little more time before he come back. Also, because the other, the white cop only asked for what? 20, 40 more? Mm -hmm. And he went and got 100 so that he can buy himself more time. And then Diamond gave him a little 50. Now that other cop keep threatening to, to turn on him. You dirty now too. The moment you took money from me, you in the same boat. Like, you've been dirty. Right. Like, this dude don't, you know, he, his sister is just not a, unaccountable. So I guess somebody must have tied her up, kidnapped her, and made her do drugs. And that's how she od Right. Because you got to give someone a blank, 60% of the blame or more, got to go to your sister. Right. You can't blame the drug dealer because I don't see in my lifetime of hearing and experience a drug dealer making you use drugs. You know, it's maybe a boyfriend, a girlfriend, 
a friend that may put the peer pressure on you, but drug dealers is very rare where they're like pressing right. you like that. You You're know. chasing them down. Yeah, pretty much. You you asking them for deals and hook up and and you know, buying stuff eventually. Um has it been that case before? I'm sure. You know yeah. what I mean? But it's always the exception. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, well, okay. Right. But yeah. most of the time, I'm sure this girl Diamond didn't like chase her down like, man, you ready to use? You ready to use? Try right, this, right. try so this. Was, like, was she the tester or something? Or right. Like, you know exactly. I mean? Like Nancy Reagan say, just say no, man. That ain't even applicable. Because it's your friends or, you know, your, your person you dating that'll probably have you using more than anything. And they don't even be like, try it, try it, try it. They may say, try it. And people put peer pressure on their own self to try stuff and do stuff a lot of times or don't want to feel cool, left out and trying to be cool trying to be in the in crowd all that stuff you know so you know very rarely is somebody got a gun to you just like this saying try it and that's what he make it seem like diamond did to his sister had the gun on her like he got exactly. the gun on that's diamond yeah. And if you're going to go dirty, you can't be scary dirty. You know what I'm saying? He should have told this white cop, I'll blow your brains out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Don't ever come to me with this BS. Yeah. I would have I, mean? I would have came and checked dude after that. Like, hey, man, you just you as dirty as He's, me. He ain't going to be a scared, dirty cop. I know. He must be worried old boy going to take his ass out. You know, I mean, he do look like a tweak of his damn self. So... I don't know. Diamond got a lot to worry about, though. What you think about Diamond once he heard about Jannard and Blackston? Uh, we know we that Jannard couldn't hear him upstairs. He had his bad ear to the door. Um, <laughs> what you think about I that situation think, with the brothers now? What's going to happen? I don't think they're going to kill anybody in the next episode, but I hope like they don't. Uh, get rid of Jannar because he's one of the bright spots of the show. Yeah, he's a good actor. The show needs a villain. We need somebody to dislike. And Jannar is doing a great job at that, uh, making all the wrong moves, being emotional and just being that villain. Diamond is Diamond. You know, he hasn't really, he doesn't serve a purpose, in my opinion. Tommy done went to this man three times for help. <laughs> three times he didn't tell him, no, I like it. You know what I'm saying? I'm finally free. <laughs> That's my diamond impression. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going back to the inside for nobody. For nobody. Not even <laughs> you. But I feel him. But you didn't did so much already, man. You shouldn't mm -hmm. even have started getting in, trying to be back at the head of the CMB. This, right. This is my thing with Jannar. Like, you, your back door, it's not you. It's such a, a, a strength for Dahlia. Not knowing. Like, dude, you could have been the first person that you could have had bricks of this stuff if you wouldn't have backed Dora Tommy before. Like, y'all could have been the first people getting on with the Dahlia. Mm-hmm. That you year is saying? legendary. If you would have been loyal to Tommy and right. not just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you're right, though. You know, and he had all this anger towards Tommy for what? Right, right, so what I'm saying. Tommy never did nothing to you. Nothing. Tommy to you. Yeah, Tommy actually saved you. If anything, Vic should have been mad because Tommy the one that made Vic go at gunpoint to the dope spot. You know, he helped Jannar, saved him. His gun jammed with the tweakers. And he mad. He right. more mad than Vic. You know why? Because Diamond was over here listening to Tommy, not Diamond listening to his ass. Right. I, I you hope, think Diamond gonna take him out? What's Diamond's next plan? What's his play? I don't think he got it unless they do a total heel turn on Diamond. I don't think he's gonna have it in him to kill his brother. He may find out a way to send him back, send him to prison or something. I don't. I don't even. I think we're gonna have a bunch of open storylines after the next episode. It's very hard to make predictions about about for about force. 
We mm. don't know the direction that they're going. We might get 20 minutes of Kate and JP cuddling. No, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Please, no. <laughs> hey, JP, how you doing, hon? I heard you know how to cook up some new sugar. Let me get a little sample for your mother. Oh, right, she tasted down. You can yeah. that. Give a yeah. little bit of that for your mother. <laughs> Make a little bit of that sugar for your mother. Show me how much you miss me there, baby. <laughs> Show me how much you miss me there, <laughs> my little chocolate boy. <laughs> well, to make predictions. I, okay, I'll make one. I do. I don't think. I think it's gonna be left open, and they're gonna have an internal war. I don't think Diamond's gonna kill him. He definitely, if he had a chance, would. I don't think Janar would blink twice. He'd put a hole in Diamond. I think so too. I don't understand why he doing this old roundabout stuff anyway. He could have just got him killed and moved on. Why are you? Playing this why around. Why would he not throw a fight? Why throw right, a fight? Right, right. I'm like, yeah, I run CBI now. You this, uh, yeah. Out. His and whole Diamond plan really is weird. Diamond would have kept his word. Like, I don't understand why I throw the fight. I don't either. What's, what's the whole giving him the position back just to want to set him up and kill him? You could have picked him up from prison or something, and, and if he wanted to get all that position back when y'all was at the baseball field, you could have took him out. And nobody right. would have known. Right. Or simply just win the fight. Right. Then you would have had the damn control. Because that's what they were fighting for, control, right? Exactly. So win the fight if you could, and then you got control. What's the problem? Right. He probably he couldn't have threw. That don't make sense. I'm going to say he ain't throw that fight. He just said he <laughs> Because that, that really, really, I just thought about it. That really makes zero sense. Right. It does make zero sense. Yeah. That's an excellent point. That's why I didn't think he threw the fight at first. But it did put a little doubt in my head when they were sitting at the bridge talking. And, uh, you know, yeah, uh, Goldilocks was. He said it to Elijah and Blackstone. Right. He was so co-signing like, it. So, Yeah. I do love that sweater though. That's fire. But Power always got some of the best wardrobe on TV. I ain't the gonna best lie. wardrobe. Yeah, they definitely got some war dope ass wardrobe department. Right, you don't even matter the era. Yeah, you ain't lying. Crazy painting, how it is. You know what I'm saying? It don't even matter the era. That's true. Um, and from my little small little taste uh, of being in the show. The wardrobe department when I was there, I mean, they had a whole little warehouse full of stuff. And the ladies was cool, and they had all kind of stuff. I didn't get to wear nothing dope, but... Right, too bad you had to wear <laughs> <laughs> Right. They it's had nothing dope. nice for me, unfortunately. Right, it's, it's some Dolce Gabbana. Right. Stuff. But I did see a lot of stuff hanging up. It looked like a damn clothing store. So, you know, I didn't yeah. see nothing... Hey. Super special, you. like uh, go ahead and write you back in. Send, let's send Janard to prison. <laughs> put on his ass. Let me right. I'm gonna roll. <laughs> I'm gonna roll his ass over. <laughs> they gonna have an all wheel drive chair. I'm gonna roll that bug over like a speed bump. Blue, blue. That's for messing with my product. Well, Janard is actually probably <laughs> one of my favorite characters. Him and Liliana. Yeah. Like to me, Tommy, Liliana, and this ain't in no particular order. Uh Jannard and uh you know Mick Flynn are my favorite, you know, on the show. Um they really they really good. Um not that everybody else is bad or you know better or worse. I ain't going to get into all of that, but I really like them. I like get that list too. Like, yeah, I like Janara, Liliana, Tommy, of course. Yeah. Man, let me think of another character. I do like Gloria a lot too, but some people say sh that she didn't have a lot. I mean, she sure played those uh, naked roles really good. And uh, <laughs> hey, they looked shook right there when they seen Diamond. They did, didn't they? They was like, oh, snap. I ain't know they was there. Oh, snap. And uh, he like, oh, I ain't hear y'all down there either. 
which you know they really scared of dude which if you could take him out what you so scared of you know Monique say she like D-Mac okay yeah, D-Mac remind me of uh, one, one of the kids at work man <laughs> all the in the world for real Right. All the potential in the world. Just want to uh, be a thug. Can't see it. Right. Want to be or just in that predicament. You know, yeah. in a bad situation. But you like, man. You know what I'm saying? He's smiling, joking. You know, how could you not like a kid like that? That's why. I, I, that's why one of my favorite scenes was when Tommy told him like, "Show off your brain." Mm. Eight point two five six nine. <laughs> Beautiful mind, like Hustle Crow, up in this piece. Uh, one thing that D-Mac and Marshall remind me of and this is uh, that Tupac song Shorty Wanna Be a Thug you know uh, I'd be like how old are you 16 16 right. you some bad mother forker <laughs> even Marshall like even the whole backdoor play that he did like you know what I'm saying he learned it from Jannar right what Jannar do to him as soon as he could same thing, backdoor them. So that's true. Uh, you get one mistake when you a kid like that, even though you're supposed to say solid. You know what I mean? A lot of people mm -hmm. was on Marshall head, like I'll eat D Mac. Shouldn't trust him. Probably shouldn't. Right. But Kendall say do she don't trust. Him. Yeah. Do you trust Marshall? Because Kendall say she don't trust Marshall. What you think yeah, about that? I, it's still up. I want to trust Marshall, but I don't. Once you backdoor me like that, you got that in you. I mean, the trust is gone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I would hope that he wouldn't do it again. What's up with uh with uh Diamond's little sugar bear? You trust her? Uh, I think that he may use her to get Jannard out the way, maybe. That would be smart. I think she into Diamond. I think so, too. She, she, she a little cutie. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, but yeah, I think she really into Diamond. Man. They kind of like each other. I like her, but mm -hmm. yeah, that would be smart. Like, like Jay is not hard, man. So they can so to make it fit. It's not hard. Use her. She brought her character. Use her. Make her an integral part. That right. would be the whole point. Was her point just to be there with Diamond and, and, and had a great sex scene of all time in power history? <laughs> I don't know about that, but I still love yeah. me some Ghost and Angie. But it, it was the most raunchy. I don't know, Jay. It was pretty raunchy, like the stuff she was saying. I'm like, <laughs> power? Like, what? but you know what? This is the perfect setup, though, because exactly. they already set it up. You That's know, she was supposed to be doing the story. Yeah, now she caught them feelings, flip the script, take his brother out. That way he can't kill his brother, but he's still hurt because he put his brother in prison. And it's all tied up with a nice little bow. It's a softball. Now, yeah. what are they going to do with it? They probably, knowing power, they won't even mm -hmm. touch it. She won't even be in the fight. In the, in the, in the, who knows, man? But like you said, we, we, it's fun to think about it. It's fun to make these theories and predictions, but it's not hard. Like, that would be great right there. Like you said, with a bow on it right there, throwing you a softball, a, 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 a underhand joint. Right. Out the puck. Definitely. So, yeah, that that would be an easy one. Hopefully they don't, uh, you know, let leave that on the cutting room table. Let's see. All right. Don't forget to put in the uh, hashtag J Moore Reviews, everybody. And even if they jam them up on something minor, you know what I'm saying? A year, two years or something. Not, it don't got to be a, a, a life, a 10-year sentence, you know what I mean? It could be something minor. Just get him out the way for a, a year or two or something. Mm-hmm. Nelly Max say he think he should kill Jannard because Jannard has no issue killing him. Yeah, but that's his younger brother, and I don't think Diamond built that way. And I don't think Jannard would just be able to turn his water off like that. He, he was talking that talk to Blackstick, but squeezing on your own brother, who you know solid, you know this man is solid. Even if he don't agree with you, you know that he's not a bad person. He's not trying to harm you. 
just just to to kill him, even though y'all having a, a difference of agreements on some money stuff like that. Would mm-hmm. I don't think Jannard is that ruthless, right? I don't think so either. Now, what's up with Freddie Gibbs, uh, Popeye? Uh, I love his yeah, character. yeah he you, got way more screen time than I thought that he would get. I think we talked about that yesterday. I don't understand why. Did he just pull the gun out on his cousin like that? I know, right? Like, out of nowhere. Like, I'm just... They don't see eye to eye on this business matter. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you think he gonna cut the water off of his little nephew? His cousin? He threatened him. uh, He he got that brick, so he want more of it. Even though he kind of gave an ultimatum. The play, if it would have came from anybody else besides D-Mac, it was a good play. D-Mac was smart enough not to say Tommy's name. Uh, they they learned it from Jannard. I mean, Jannard backdoored them. This was always they play anyway. Mm-hmm. So They ain't going to be able to deliver, though, because Tommy right. ain't uh, down with that. But what I yeah, definitely. What I want to know is how did D Mac get a brick of down here here and there with the money? That's what I was wondering too. How did he get that? I was wondering that too. That's another loose end. Little stuff like did he yeah. steal it like Tarika? They should have shut they should have had some down your bricks over in the corner with the money and, and let us see that. That's all it would have took. A, a camera pan, boom. They got down here and money in here. So right. we don't know it's product it's product there too. But all yeah. I saw was money. And they shouldn't have Shorty there by himself in that location. I don't give a damn if he is behind the trap, though. That's too much money, and he's too young to be by himself without nobody be watching. Guard in there, you know what I'm saying? An OG. Yeah, definitely. At least Tommy one, to, maybe see, two. Tommy needs reinforcements. This would have, I don't know why. I'm not even going to say I name. told people stop looking at IMDb talking about. Uh, what you call it was coming. Hey, man, people didn't want to listen to me. I said, yeah. man, they th- they sending people off. We Be- could have used them, though. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It would have made a lot of sense. You know what I'm saying? That could have been... What's his name, man? <laughs> the man that should it. remain nameless. Right. Two bit. <laughs> right. They, they should have had him. the purpose in this series, like... Definitely, he could. Tommy could a use gun that, that he could trust. Yep. Right. He could have been right there with D Mac, and he's smart too. Yeah, and he's smart, and that would have helped Tommy with his little war room and all that. You know, but it is what it is. Uh, I IMDb, like I was telling people, they don't even list my stuff until after it aired. I mean, I know I, I ain't nowhere near on no think, level, but I think they're saving. They know they know the fans want to see him, so they're saving him. They don't want to give it to us all at once. But it had him listed for like four episodes this season. They did yeah. the same thing with uh, what you call it, uh, Crystal yeah, Balls. They, they trolling. They yeah, trolling. they're gonna bring both of them back because they know yeah. YouTubers are talking about it and now have fans looking at IMDb. Most people didn't look at IMDb until people started bringing it up all the time. Now a lot of people look at it, and so now they don't put stuff on there accurate anymore until it's after like, it's aired. It's like clickbait almost. Yeah. On traffic to it. Yeah, yeah. So. We're gonna, I think we're going to eventually see those characters, but they're going to wait until you know they, they need a boost because you know when they come back, that's just going to be a ratings boost for them. Right. Who knows? Maybe two bit a comeback in the tenth episode. <laughs> the show over now, so who knows? Like, man. Man, you know, time to introduce Big. Right. When he gonna come just to start shooting, he could have stayed his ass at home. They're not gonna say nothing. He's gonna be like, Yeah, come on, two bit we're gonna introduce him. Right. <laughs> oh, by the way, we at war. Hey, you wanna be at war with me? Come on. <laughs> so yeah. That's that's a lot. Um, they definitely teased him, and yeah, you. I tried to tell people stop looking at it, but people try. No, it says this. It says that. I looked it up. So okay, we'll see. I don't know nothing. Yes. You know, we'll see. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 
I sure was, sure was hoping, hoping that we would see him. But, but I mean, I knew by the time we got to certain other episodes, like yeah, it was over. Plus, the they Blackston, had the Blackston episode. I'm like, okay, we don't see too big in this episode when they introduce him. Like, he's not gonna be like. right. Plus, they only had Diamond listed for one episode. And I knew he was in every episode. And they didn't only they only updated it as the episodes came out. Like the all right, he in two episodes, two episodes there, three episodes, three episodes. They may have it as him listed in all ten episodes now. I mean it ain't but one episode left. So let me see right quick before we get out of here. Don't forget to type in the hashtag J Moore Reviews. I'm going to do a giveaway. If we get up to 100 likes before the show is over in the next 5 to 10 minutes, then I'm going to do two giveaways. How many likes do we got right now? Uh, let's see how many people, what they say while they, uh, while my people letting me know how many likes we got. Let's see what they say on Force. How many uh, episodes is Diamond in? Uh, they got them in for next season, too, now. So they got all 11. See, they got D-Mac is only in 10 episodes. But we'll see. Because he been in more than 10. He been in, He ain't been in 10 episodes already. He wasn't in every episode, was he? 1, 2, 3, 4, no. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. He wasn't in every episode. But okay. Also... A little fun fact. Did y'all know he was in the shy as Jason, Ronnie's son that was killed in the very first episode? I did not know that. That was D-Mac. That was before his hair grew. He was Ronnie's son that was killed and was laying there in the first episode. And then he was in a later episode. Um, when they were showing how he got killed later that season. But, yep, that was him and, and uh, the shy, Lucian Cambrick. Uh, very cool and down-to-earth dude as well. Um, let's see, which the episodes was that? He was in the shy as Jason Roxborough, yep. That's uh, Ronnie's stepson. And the pilot, that was the first episode, and he's on down the road. So, it's been a minute, but... Yup, that was him. It was before his hair grew out. But, uh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, so... Yeah. This doctor, they got her in six episodes. It's been six episodes? Yeah, probably about that. Who is Adrian? His girl, Diamond Girl. Oh, oh, okay. She looked different in this picture. <laughs> uh, Jeremiah was in five episodes. Okay. Uh, she was in four episodes? I guess so. Marshall only been in six. Paulie been in nine. Paulie Pierogi. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Pierogi. <laughs> Tommy Flanagan, Walter Flynn. It's almost the same name, damn near. Nah, dang. <laughs> All right, so we see that Jannard, Vic, Tommy, and Diamond will be back next season. Gloria was not in 10 episodes. Yeah, it's, it's inaccurate. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? She was not in 10 episodes. She ain't been in this. She wasn't in this episode, was she? Or did they show a flashback? I don't know. I don't think she been in every episode, though. But, you know, it don't be accurate, man. So, it is what it is. Uh, Hold on. It ain't meant for people to investigate like people have been doing. <laughs> <laughs> but it is good information. And, you know. That's cool. Got a lot of good stuff on here. So, Claudia, Claude. Claude. I know. My friend's father's name was Claude. <laughs> uh, nine episodes? 
okay, I guess. All right, how many uh, how many likes do we got? It was sixty five likes at uh, what five three four minutes ago. How many likes we got? Look like we only doing one giveaway tonight. It ain't gonna get up to it. It's a hundred and fifteen people in here, but we ain't about to get up to that. So let's go ahead and do the likes. Yeah. Yes. My uh my computer about to die anyway, man. Thanks for having me on. Alright, no problem, man. Right up, man. Lock in with Jay. Uh peace, man. Be smooth. Yep, take it easy, man. I'll holla at you. Did you ever get your mug or you ain't get one? Uh no, not yet. Uh oh, I'm okay. wait, I'm gonna grab a shirt and I'm gonna grab a whole bundle. All right, <laughs> it's all good. I know you was asking me, so I ain't know if you you got to it yet or not. It's all good though. All right, man, I appreciate it. I catch you tomorrow or or on the next one. Yeah. All right, take it easy, man. Later. All right, that's my brother Brillo coming through. Appreciate you for stopping by. Um, good insight on the show. Definitely, you all need to check out from on epics it's one of those shows where you can't wait to see the next episode and it's not a lot of shows out like that right now so i think that's a good one to check out all right let's get ready to do this giveaway let's see we only have 72 likes so i guess you know it is what it is. We got 19 hashtag J Moore reviews. Tamika said, I love From. From is really good. I really enjoy that show. I should have talked about it sooner so that more people would have started watching it. Um, I definitely want them to bring out a season two. Netflix is known to cancel shows after one season. Which makes me not even want to watch some shows on Netflix because why spend time watching something for them to cancel in one season and now you left with watching something that you invested your time in and now it's not a completion. It's just left incomplete. So I don't know. Um, but I think From will at least get two seasons. So we'll see what's up. Levon, another great review, Jay. Thank you so much, Levon. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks, everybody, for your support, for watching. Um, well, it wasn't no super chats, but um, if you do, somebody did ask about joining the membership. If you do join the membership, I appreciate that. Um, since it's only 21 entries... I guess not that many people are interested. So what I'll do tonight is we'll do a Discord one week free trial. Uh, from from now on, I think if I get at least 40 entries, then I might do a cash giveaway or something. But just 20 people, I'm going to do a Discord trial. Now, if you win and you already in Discord, then I'll do a $10 cash giveaway. So, that means, because most of these people already support, so I'm going to give them something for being loyal and supportive. Okay? So, definitely put the hashtag Reviews and go ahead and get involved. I appreciate it. Um, Kendall, you said From is definitely worth watching. I made sure I didn't miss an episode. Me too. Um, and I agree, Winning Time is another show that I really enjoy. And I don't like to miss an episode. I'm looking forward to it every time it come out. Um, so, you know, we'll see how it go. LaVon, you think that's a smart idea? Well, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I try. <laughs> So, definitely put in more entries and I'll put in some money. If you're already a member, then you got a chance to win money. Or, well, I'll just give you the money and then you could decide to buy a coffee mug or whatever. All right. 
Let's get ready to do the raffle. We got 23. Um, so it's already been an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, I think I'll just go ahead and do it. We got 24. Let's get one more, at least 25. I always like to do round numbers and fives. 25, 30. Let's get one more right quick before I go. Let's see who that is. Nisha put in the hashtag J Moore Reviews. Victor on the Facebook. I appreciate it. My boy Ray with the hashtag J Moore Reviews. And Chris Banks with the hashtag J Moore Reviews. Brother Banks, I appreciate it. Let's hit that draw. What we got? Kendo coming through with the win. Couldn't happen to a more supportive and, and sweethearted person. Kendall, uh, congrats on the win. Kendall, I know you're here. Um, congrats, Kendall, on winning the giveaway. And... You can message me in Discord and I'll give you the 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 cash cash app giveaway. Kendall, are you still with us? Okay. Oh, Kendall said pass it forward. Look at that. Told you that's just a very kind and generous woman and I appreciate you, Kendall. All of you guys that's still here, you might want to thank Kendall because I'm about to hit the draw again because she said pass it forward. So here we go. Steve Walton. Brother Steve with the three-piece suit. Steve, are you still here? Steve Walton. Brother Walton, Walt Daddy, with with the three piece suit on over there. I don't think Steve is here. Steve is gone. With the picture looking like the funeral director. Where you at, Steve? <laughs> Brother Steve, Steve ain't here, man. Steve left. Steve won and he ain't here. All right, man. Look like I'm at the draw again. If you ain't entered, you better put in the hashtag J Moore Reviews. You got a chance to win. Look at that. It's about to be three chances to win tonight. Steve Walton. Deacon Walton. I like that. Deacon Walton. Where the Deacon? All right, about to run it again, brother Steve. The deacon is uh, is is helping lay hands on somebody. Well, if loving the Lord is wrong, uh, I don't wanna be right. Uh, can I get a run it again? Uh, let's go. All right, Vic wins again. Damn, Brother Vic in the building. Boy, your ass need to play the lottery. Victor done won at least three, four times. Damn. I need to get some of that good juju, man. Vic with the win. Victor, you still here? Or did Victor leave and go to sleep? I think Victor's still here. I just saw him type something a second ago. Victor, you here? You know, people would think I'm cheating if I don't hear from you. Big Vic in the building. You say, tell you what, run it. What is AF? 
S I N me. <laughs> All right, Vic is here. All right, so you want to run it, a pass it on? Look at that, boy. That's a real winner right there. That's a real winner right there. He gonna pass it on, man. All right, let's see if who wins this time. We up to thirty entries. That's why you gotta stay to the end. Don't leave. Damn, Vic won two times in a row. Let's do it again. Meg Allen. I just saw you typing some stuff, too, not too long ago. Meg Allen. It was almost your time, desserts by Natalie. Almost. Meg Allen. I did see Meg Allen typing something not too long ago. Meg Allen, where are you? Are you still here or did you give up and leave? Got the nice pretty little profile picture. Lip gloss shining. Did you leave? There you go. You here. All right. Congrats, Meg Allen, on the win. You now get to come to a free trial in Discord, hang out with everybody, talk, hear the behind-the-scenes info, watch shows with us. You message me on Instagram, Reviews with the underscore between each name. Come on through. Don't be like some people that join and get the free trial and then get shy and don't say anything. Don't let it go to waste. Nobody going to do anything. Come on through. Hang out. It's an excellent group of ladies. The girl, the ladies communication. I mean, not communication. Uh, the ladies, uh, I can't think of the right word right now. Uh, community. There we go. <laughs> I knew it started with a C. But the ladies community in the Discord is excellent. Really good sisterhood. Gina, Crafty, Kelly, Barika, so many others. Really cool group of ladies. Uh, down to earth. Um, I'm really happy to know them and have them in the Discord. Um, so definitely come on, um, pretty girl, uh, Jen, so many people is really cool. Um, I don't like to name people cause I always forget and leave off some people. Moochie, it's about 50 ladies in there. So I can't remember everybody. My memory is getting old, but I appreciate it. Each and every one of y'all, the fellas too, come on through. And uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy hanging out with everybody. All right. You say you've been watching since your honor. Oh, man. So, yeah, you definitely been around for a while. Glad to finally have you in the Discord for a while. Be able to talk, laugh, and have a good time. So, come on through. Message me on Instagram. And you can come on over. You say... How do I find this channel on StreamYard? Um, this channel is on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and t Twitch. It's J Moore Reviews. Um, what do you mean find the channel on StreamYard? You mean join live? The link? Um... I just share the link for people to join live when they're on Discord, if that's what you mean. Um, I don't know what you mean by find this channel on StreamYard. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I appreciate everybody for coming through. Um, Nisha, it's all right. Yeah, I'm on YouTube, Facebook. You just type in J Moore Reviews on any of those locations, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Twitch, all of that stuff, and uh, you'll find it. Plus, I also have the link 
in my picture. So if you go to the home screen on my YouTube channel in that picture, you will see right here, you can click on this. Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Patreon. You can click on any of these and it will take you right there. So this is actually hyperlinks. You could click on that at any time and it will take you right there. So check it out. And I hope everybody enjoyed the show. It was good talking with everybody. Uh, appreciate you, Brillo, for coming up. Um, and I will see y'all tomorrow night with Pretty Girl Love Trap content and Moochie joining me to talk about episode 9 of Power and I will see you then it's 10pm Eastern Time everybody have a good evening enjoy your night check out From on Epics and I'll see y'all on the next one peace have a good evening be safe and I'm out the J Mill, the very best reviews. Tell them nothing can test me, those. <laughs>